Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Now, after that, John was put in prison, and John was put into prison because he told Herod he couldn't have his brother's wife. Now, you can't tell a Baptist preacher you can't do that. They do the same thing. They, they de-church you. Don't tell me what I can't do. I know. I've been de-churched because I told pastors that this is wrong. Jesus came into Galilee. Well, he comes out of Galilee. He goes to, to the River Jordan. And he's back in Galilee. Preaching. Oh, here we go. Preaching. Preaching. You know, you don't know how to preach. You know what Jesus did. What would Jesus do? He preached. The gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus is not dead yet. He's not been buried yet. He's not resurrected from the grave yet. And I had a Sunday school teacher, oh, there's only one gospel. What do you do there? What is that? That's the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's not the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ suffered and died, was buried and rose again the third day, according to the scripture, that you might believe in him to have eternal life. That's the good news to the Jews. The kingdom of God is present. You will get a, 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 a heavenly king of kings, the Messiah. You will have the, you know, the law, the, the, the Levites, and you'll be in your land, and everything will be hunky-dory. The problem is when you close the Gospels, the Messiah has been crucified. His dead body has been buried. He has risen from the grave over 400 and seen his, his resurrected body and talked to him. And the nation goes about rejecting him. And saying, now, this would be the first time Jesus speaks in the gospel of Mark. The time is fulfilled in prophecy. The kingdom of God is at hand. Problem is, is Jesus lying? No, he's rejected. Repent ye, oh, repent, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. No. There are other gospels. In the tribulation, the book of Revelation said that there's an angel flying through heaven. He has a gospel. The good news here is the kingdom of God, which is a spiritual kingdom. And that spiritual kingdom of God in Jesus Christ. The kingdom of heaven is where the birds and temple and men and women Now, oh, wait a minute. Uh, kingdom of God, repent for the, and believe the gospel. So there's, there, there's a common frame of all the ages of man is believe. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he's in north in Israel, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Right? They're fishermen. They're out there working. And Jesus said unto him, Come ye after me, and I will, I will make you become fishers of men. Boy, there's so much wrong with this verse. And the Baptist church, I can think of one right now. You know, we got the fishers of, of men and all that. You know, fishers of men month, we're going to go out. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's, let's slow down. Let's take the Bible. To Jeremiah 16. We are talking to Jews. There is no church. There is no death. There is no burial. There is no resurrection. The Gentiles are not getting saved yet. Jeremiah says, talking to the Jews, but, uh, oh, Behold, the Lord, verse 15, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them.
So when we go back to Mark, I'll make you fishers of men. I, now, I mean, you can spiritually apply it, but then when you put on your car the symbol of the fish, all right, in heaven there are four beings that cry, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, for all eternity. I want to hear what they, how they sound. There's one that has a face of an eagle. There's one that has a face of man. There's one that has a face of an ox. And then one that has a face of a lion. There's mankind. There's the birds that fly in heaven. There's the tamed beast. And there's the wild beast. There's something missing. The dragon. The reptiles. Fish are of the amphibian reptile class. And the very fact is, if you are a fish, you are of Satan, not of God. For the nation of Israel are spoken of John chapter 10 as sheep, not fish. So when you put your fish symbol on your car, you're actually representing Satan. The serpent, the dragon, Revelation 12. Unsaved men are like the fish. There's all kinds of fish. There's all kinds of unsaved men. But Israel, type of sheep. Straightway they forsook the nets and followed them. So they obey. Too many Christians, you want to run the Christian way, will not forsake. I mean, they'll get saved and that's it. They don't want to forsake. They don't want to give it up. I, th I find it remarkable today is you've got these preachers and pastors in, in America. they got these houses and cars and all kinds of things. You're rich when all the other world and the churches, the pastors and all that are dead poor. you got some who own airplanes. And we had gone a little further. Thence he saw James, the son of Zebedee, the father, and John, his brother, who also were in the ship, mending their nets. So Simon and Peter are throwing the nets out. James and John and Zebedee are fixing the nets. And when you're fishing, you're always constantly mending your nets because they get snagged on rocks. They get cut by the fish. They just go bad. Seawater is havoc on ropes. There they are. Straightway he called them. And they left their father, Zebedee, in the ship with the hired servants. Well, look at they got servants. Employees, really? <laughs> and went after them. Okay, so where is Jesus saying to James and John, come follow me, I'll make you fishers of men? And they went into Capernaum, straightway on the Sabbath day, this is the first Sabbath day mentioned, he entered the synagogue, everybody went to the synagogue, and taught. So they were, when they had the synagogue, they were allowed times to get up and speak. And when you put Jesus in the pulpit, oh, brother, I could think of some Baptist Baptists today. They wouldn't give Jesus the time. If he came walking through their church, want to go out. No, no, you sit down over there. And I'm taking I, my message. And they were astonished at his doctrine, what he taught. That's what doctrine is, what you teach. For he taught them as one that had authority. Well, of course, he's God. Duh, but they don't believe it. He wrote the scriptures that he's reading. He lived the scriptures that he's reading. He is the scriptures that he's reading. And not as the scribes. Those that handled the word of God. So already in the beginning, they are mounting Jesus against the, the religious leaders. 
here describes, and Pilate would go so far as to say, I know for envy you delivered him under. Here we go. How dare you put him against us? I mean, we went to the scholarly school, the seminary. How dare you tell us? The blank with your uh, scholarship and your worldly and your Hebrew and your Greek and your, your nonsense. And there was in their synagogue. Notice how it says their synagogue. It doesn't say God's. God is far from the now. The synagogue came from Babylon when they were ex, when they were exiled to Babylon. These synagogues started popping up to teach the Jews how to be and continue to be Jews. It's a good idea. They're like little churches, and they open up the scriptures. They read the scriptures, and they, and they devote to people the scripture to help you live right. After doing Matthew, can you say that those synagogues have been doing right? When the ones that rejected the Messiah and should have re recognized the Messiah are the religious ones. There was a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out. Today in your churches, there are many with unclean spirits, and they all cry out. Saying, let us, that's the that's unclean spirit, let us, there's more than one in this guy. What have we, us and we, to do with thee, Jesus? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. Look, the, the devils know who God is. Art thou come to destroy us? They have no representation of time. They're thinking, uh-oh. We just showed up the great white throne of judgment. And we are far from the great white throne of judgment. Or... Number two, or letter B, Peter, I believe it's Peter or Jude, speaks about the ones that have been put in the fiery judgment, that have been chained in darkness. I mean, there are some angels right now in prison, they're not going to come out. And there are some unclean spirits that are roaming about. There's some on this earth right now, there's some in heaven. And maybe they're thinking, hey, what are you going to do? You're going to chain us up? You're going to, or is this the great white throne judgment? But they are also representing to the fact is that Jesus can destroy them. Now, not eliminate them, because when you go into the lake of fire, you're destroyed, but you're not eliminated. You may burn something else, but the smoke is always there. In the atmosphere of the smoke and ashes, you're not eliminated. I know thee who thou art. That's the devils. The holy one of God. Well, look at that. Young clean spirits profess Jesus, the holy one of God, when the religious people, after reading Matthew, has put him on the cross and crucified. If thou be the, the, the son of God, come down off the cross. And the devil's like, uh, he is. Do you realize what, what, what awe and amazement of the, of the good angels and the wicked angels that those religious people played on Jesus to say, what is going on here? The good angels of God saying, that is God. What are you doing? And the, the unsaved angels, the, the wicked angels, are like, hey, hey, that guy's, they're on our side. James will tell you that they believe in God and tremble. 
Well, I want to tell you something about the, the society today of America. They profess to know God or even outright deny God, A or B. They don't tremble over God. Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. So in Mark, the servant of God speaks. And he says unto him, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God's at hand. The kingdom message. Come ye after me. Come. I will make you fishers of men. Look at the works. And hold thy peace. Come out of him. I mean, he may be a servant of God, but, okay, the devils have to answer to Jesus. And when the unclean spirit had tore him, ripped him open, and cried with a loud voice, he, singular now, came out of him. And they were all amazed, all those at the, at the temple that day, I mean, the synagogue that day. Now, this has not happened. Ever happened. Now we're starting to see the mighty signs and the mighty power of God in this man named Jesus that nobody can do. In so much that they question among themselves, you know, you're a Baptist. <laughs> saying, what thing is this? What, what on earth just happened here? You know, that's the same thing they said about manna. You know what they're saying right now? Manna, manna, manna. You say, what's manna? Manna is, what is this? That's what manna means. We don't know what this is. What is this? What new doctrine, what new teaching is this? It, there, it is not a doctrine. It's a work of signs for the Jews. He, he didn't teach nothing. Now the devils did, professing who Jesus is. But Jesus didn't teach nothing. He did signs and wonders. For a nation of Israel that requires signs and wonders, and to them is what doctrine, what teaching is this, that's the error of the charismatics. For what authority? Oh, here we go. And for the church, well, we'll see a lot of references to the church through Mark. Well, what school did you go, go to? Who taught you? Well, I, we sat under Dr. So-and-so. And we went to Hebrew class and, and we done this and we, we went to this college, rah, 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 rah. And, and God's up in heaven like, just give me a Dr. Pepper, okay? To that nonsense. That's what they're saying. Because in Galilee, to them is... Isn't this the carpenter's son? No. Legally adoption, yes, but rightfully, no. He's the son. Of <coughs> He's the son of God. He told Mary and Luke when they were at the temple, I am going about my father's business, and he's not holding a hammer and ruler and a saw. You know, all these stupid stories that Jesus was in the shop one day and all these nails lined up. You know, Jesus, shut up. This shit. They, they got this movie. Uh, no, I just read today. Controversial about Abraham and Isaac and God telling him, Why don't you just shut up? Believe it by faith. 
And many churches are going to go, oh, we're gonna, all going to go see this. I don't, you don't care what the title and all that garbage is. And all the church fools in love. I said, full in love with that crap. What authority? I'm a street preacher. I, I rank with many street preachers. And yeah, I guarantee and someone who go to a church and the uh, what gets you ready to do that? What makes you do that? You're screaming at the people. They turn people away. My, my, I had one woman with it. My pastor don't do that as they ought to. I put on my thing, I'm Stolly William Hayward DD, or I'm Dr. Stolly William Hayward. Only for the fact is, in your face, I got the same degree you do. Okay? God's probably used me more than he's used you. I mean, some of the things you teach. You can't have God working in your life when you're teaching paganism to the devil. He even, he commanded, he even the unclean spirits. And they do obey him. Well, we're at the beginning. Jesus just started. He's 33, he's 30 years old. He's got three and a half more years left. Brother, it just begun. And John will finish his gospel with, you know what? All the things that Jesus has done, we did not record. You think, all right, tell him, and it said many, us, tell the unclean spirit to come out of him. And the unclean spirit, listen, but that ain't it. If you want to, I mean, later on, if you want to decipher, try something like this. What was it? Seven fish, seven, seven loaves of bread and two fish, and he fed over 5,000. Okay, try to do the math on that one. You do the math that they're in a boat, there's a big storm, they wake him up. They wake God up. Hey, oh, what's the problem, guys? Oh, you're so lacking faith. Wind be still, start, and it stops. <laughs> Immediately, his fame spreads about throughout all the region of Galilee. Hey, you should see this man. He was he was in church this morning. He was in synagogue this morning. You won't believe what he did. Here we go. And it's coming about this guy. And listen, this guy. He he was he was in. Uh, I want to say church. He, he was in synagogue today and. Man, you won't believe his preaching. He preaches better than the scribes. And it was unclean spirit. And he called him. You know that. Oh, he preached better than the scribes. You know that gets louder than the unclean spirit when it comes to the religious people. I guarantee you, I've been in some churches where the pastors put me down in a way because I'm afraid of that man. I had a preacher tell me one time the message. I, you know, what was all that supposed to be about? I said, well, a lot of people said they liked it. So they helped them out. I mean, it's a lot better than your messages. You copy this preacher all the time. You're as boring as anything. And all you do is pick one word out of the Bible, and that's your entire message. Now that you're retired out of the ministry. So immediately the fame spread throughout all the region about Galilee. That's up north. And forthwith, when they were come out of the synagogue, so this is still in the synagogue, they entered in the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Okay, so Simon and Andrew bring Jesus home. This is one of the places Jesus will spend his life. And James and John come in. But Simon, the Pope, so says the Catholic Church, Catholic Church proclaims Simon the first pope that the Vatican is built upon the, the, the grave of Peter. You're going to build your church on a dead man? Hey, you got a dead religion. But Simon's wife, I thought the popes weren't allowed to be married. That's why they got the nuns. The nuns are not allowed to marry either. So, oh, the birds and the bees and the... I'm going to go after little altar boy. Just speaking the truth. You don't like it. Simon White's mother laid sick of a fever. 
Anon, which means immediately, hurriedly, you know, get his attention. They tell him of her. And he came and took her by her, the hand and lifted her up. And immediately the fever left her. All right, so here we go. Miracle number two in Mark. Look, look, look what's going on. We're seeing the servant. He's serving the people. He's a doctor, if I may say respectfully. He's Dr. Jesus of God. He has cleansed the man of an unclean spirit. He has now cleansed a woman of her fever. And he's got a doctrine that supersedes. <laughs> Don't you now see the trouble? And you got to wonder, and I'm not saying this case. I'm saying with all the cases in the Bible, the ones unrecorded that John says about, with these people that are sick, now this is just a fever, well, I shouldn't say just a fever, but the, these sicknesses that Jesus come about that is recorded and not recorded, you got to wonder, some of the people that Jesus will get upset about is the snake oil they sell. Now there will a woman come to Jesus, Luke the doctor records and Luke, She's been 12 years bleeding. She spent all her money on the doctors. The doctor said that. Well, the moment she comes to Jesus and gets healed, well, that's it. She don't need to pay a copay anymore. She don't need to go to the pharmacy anymore. Why? Did you hear that man named Jesus? He healed her up, and now she won't come back to, for a follow-up? And what happened with this fever? She got up and she ministered unto him. These people that Jesus healed of all manner of sicknesses take a blind man, which will happen. Jesus gives sight to the blind man. Well, guess what now? That blind man can't beg no more. He's got to go get a job. So, the fascinating works, I'm bringing in Mark, it was too much for Matthew, is he's causing a ruckus. Imagine that moment that, 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 that a blind man, any blind man, that, that gets his sight by Jesus. Now he would be begging, because he can't work. He gets up the next morning, oh, beautiful sunset, all oh, that. He grabs his little pan or his little cup and... I can't do this no more. And the, the fame will spread out what Jesus did. I'm going to have to go down to the, the, the vineyards or something. So she, the fever left her. She gets up and she ministers to him. Gets bread, gets what, whatever he needs. And at even, after 6 p.m., when the sun did set, that's after 6, they didn't have daylight saving time, they brought unto him all that were diseased. Oh, I bet you that was a problem. Imagine Mrs. Peter. She cleaned the house up, and then here comes all the, all the refugees. Here comes, you know... And the Republicans say, build a wall, build a wall, build a wall. Don't bring them to. What? I had an episode where this guy kind of discussion, you know, we hate all these immigrants coming across the Mexican border. And well, what would you do? And I raised my hand. I said, I'd be a, I said, if I had the opportunity, if God would give me, I'd go over there with a sign or pass out gospel tracts and preach to them out there coming across the wall. Over the border into America, we go. I give them the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what I would do. You got you got to start being careful with what walls you're going to build because those walls may be set by God. Because the very fact is, when the Europeans came to America, the Native American didn't build walls. 
And if I can say it respectfully, we've been screwing those American, those Native Americans since the time we showed up. Because Christopher Columbus, what they don't tell you, when he went back to Europe, he had slaves with him. He stole in the gold. But you can't speak ill of the Catholic Church. So here's Mrs. Peter. She's got her house in that and opens up the window and <laughs> she's got a refugee camp. She's got sneezes, snuffle, disease, things that you can't see that you don't want to catch. There's leprosy and everything outside her doors. <laughs> Thanks to Jesus. And is it remarkable to the fact is Matthew, Mark, <coughs> Luke, and John, in the book of Acts, you don't ever read anything about Peter's wife again. You'll read about Mary, Mary Magdalene. There's a woman mentioned Joanna. I mean, maybe that could be his wife. I don't know. But on the, on the, the tours of Peter, in the book of Peter, where does he mention his wife? So, what has happened here is, if I can respectfully say, Jesus has a free medical clinic open up and everybody comes. We have here at Daytona Beach a, a free place where people can go for health. And then a couple times we have to see. It's so full, you've got to make an appointment. It's hard to get there. A lot of these services for the poor people, it's packed. We had one time, remember, when I was having two problems, they were, there was a place they set up, the, the doctor was set up a, a, a little, he had an RV, he would do the free uh, dental service. I mean, just, you got a bad tooth, he's going to pull it. That's all he's going to do. And that, play, that thing was wrapped around. That's what's going on here. This is a mash station. All the troops coming in, disease. And them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door of Mrs. Peter's house. I bet you he loved it. Now, there's another story. Mark, we can do. There's another story. Jesus is in this house. It's packed. And next thing you know, the people are there and saw does it starting to fall. And straw and, and grains are starting to fall. And the next thing you know, sunlight pokes through the building and here comes this stretcher, this couch with a man on it. Well, you ever ask yourself, what did a homeowner think about that? Because <laughs> after Jesus left, there's still the hole in the roof. The carpenter didn't fix the hole. <laughs> you got that? He fixed the disease, but he didn't fix the hole. You know, there's some people out there, and, and this is the Pharisees, you'll learn. When, when something happens in their life by God, only by God, they get upset. I got a preacher man at me one time when we went preaching this thing. And this one woman got saved. She asked Christ to save her. I went back and told her, oh, I've been witnessing to her all these hours. She it really didn't get saved. I'm like, okay, fine. She said she believed. And, okay. Sorry to ruffle your feathers. And it says he healed many, not all. Look at it. He healed many. That were sick of diverse diseases. That means all different kinds of diseases. And cast out many devils. Well, the many that were healed is, you know what? If they came to Jesus and they did not believe, they did not get healed. No belief, no faith, 
no action. That woman that touched the hem of his coat, she believed. There's a father that will come to Jesus. His son is with a lunatic. He says, he says Jesus, I believe. Help my unbelief. I, I got in trouble with believing. And it's recorded that everybody started coming running. Jesus dead healed the child. Now, casting out many devils, that means there were more than a two. And when you see Jesus in the nation of Israel, look what's going on. They are devil possessed. They are sick. This is the physical and the spiritual condition of the nation of Israel, Judah, when Jesus shows up. And when Jesus shows up the second time, you read the book of Revelation, diseases, plagues, devils, including the devil. Suffer not the devils, plural, never demons, to speak because they knew him. Jesus would tell them, to, hey, shut up. Why? Because they would say, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, who is God, Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of Nazareth. And there are people there who don't believe it. Because many were healed, not all. And when you're speaking about devils, there's a great error to say demons. And I'm not getting to Hebrew and Greek, but I'm going to get into uh, Rome, Romans and Greek mythology. Now, this is important because the, the mythology of the Greeks and Romans where there were devils and there were demons. Devils were wicked and vile. Devils were after the devil himself. Demons, there were good demons and there were bad demons. If you ever watch early cartoons, you know, you had the little guy, he was white and had, you know, had wings on your right shoulder. And you had the guy with the, who's red and the pitchfork on the, on the left shoulder and the, and the angel and the one on the right shoulder, oh, you got to do right, don't take it, no. And the one in the red is, take it. That's demons. And, you know, the, the little cupid guy, he, he's a good guy, though he shoots arrows, which if they went in your heart, he would kill you. Okay? Cupid is a demon by the standards of mythology. When the Bible, the King James Bible, looks at a devil who Jesus and what the Bible says, there are no good devils. Never. So you have wrongly stated demons over devils. 